We're in uh, Burnaby, B.C. now talking to uh, Ali. Go ahead. Yes, hello, gentlemen. My question is uh, regarding Microsoft. And what is uh, your guest's view about the price appreciation in the next 6 to 12 months? Thank you. I'll, I'll listen up. So, Ali, we talked earlier about energy infrastructure, then we talked about REITs, and we talked about staples, and we talked about pharma, and we talked also about the fact that as market rallies go on, buying spreads into other groups. And one of the notable groups that's underperformed so far this year has been technology in general. But in the last few weeks, uh, technology as a group has shown some improvement. If you go out and deconstruct it and say, what is it that's showing strength outside of some semiconductor companies? you're seeing some buying in the very large, well-capitalized uh, technology companies. And they're probably not buying them because they think there's a lot of growth, but they are saying, well, these are really strong balance sheets and they're showing a willingness to return capital. So in the case of Microsoft, you know, for a long time now, people have made reference to the fact that they do have a mountain of cash. Stock trades at about 11 times earnings. It pays a 2.8% dividend uh, and the dividend payout is about 30% of its earnings, which is quite low. So I think that the reason that people are buying Microsoft is more f along that dividend theme than anything else. And you know, certainly it could fit inside a portfolio. I don't think that you're buying it for the traditional reasons that you're gonna get a lot of growth out of it, but there should be some growth if you were to see economic growth pick up. We heard this week that they're going to revamp Windows 8, which has not been successful. It was supposed to be their biggest new operating system since the mid-90s, and right. the Financial Times even said this is the biggest admission of failure by a corporation since Coca-Cola 30 years ago with, with new Coke, and yet the market just kind of goes, ah, with the stock, no big deal. What do you think? Right. Well, you know, look, I mean, I bought the stock a year ago thinking that we were going to get a product cycle, and it clearly did not mm. show up. Uh, now, whether or not they can get it right, we'll have to see. The, the good news is you don't have a tremendous amount of risk here because the stock is pretty cheap. Uh, now. I don't buy things that are cheap if nobody else cares, but clearly over the last few weeks there is a new bid to some of these larger technology companies looking for return of capital. So you put those two things together and it makes it a little bit more attractive. I'm not sure I would jump up and down, but I think you'd, you'd do okay with it. Patrick is in St. Catharines with a question here for David. Go ahead, Patrick. Uh, yes. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Uh, I would like to know your outlook and expectations for Gilead Science. Okay. Okay, thank you. So uh, I have to be honest, I have not done a deep dive on Gilead recently. I will say that the biotech group uh, has been performing extremely well, and Gilead has a very interesting product cycle. Uh, there is growth, and I think that part of the expectation is a number of these uh, biotech companies are being bought by traditional ethical drug companies. So they do have very high growth. This is, you are buying something for growth here, and there's a number of companies in this group. You know, there's always risk in them. They have multiple products. Um, I would prefer to own the group owning the ETF that owns a basket of these, and XBI is one you might like to take a look at. Uh, it's performing very, very well alongside of Gilead and others in the group without taking the single company risk because, of course, this is a much more volatile group than uh, some of the other groups we've talked about. Today. And do you have a bit of that one, XBI? Yes, we own the you XBI do. and a couple of our different funds. And there's XBI, magically appearing, biotech ETF, uh, XBI, and there it is. Okay, uh, Farouk uh, now is in uh, Bruce, uh, Broussard, Quebec. Hi, Farouk. What's your opinion on Bell Alliant, whether they can sustain the dividend, especially if you look at the earnings? you find that it doesn't cover the, the dividend. Right. With a 7% with a dividend uh, that's $1.90 against earnings of $1.64, uh, they are not covering the dividend. Um, I prefer not to own these types of companies. We find that in general, when you look at a company that's got a very high payout that's maybe not sustainable, uh, I would prefer to own something with a very sustainable payout that's lower but that's more likely to grow. So, you know, I'm not going to speculate as to whether at some point they get a dividend cut, uh, but I would prefer to own a TELUS than a Bell Alliance. And uh, speaking of uh, some of the bigger telecoms, uh, you do have a top pick uh, in that uh, sector, so stay tuned for that. Right now, we're taking a short pause, and we'll come uh, right back with David Burroughs.